Hey everybody. Usually when I come on here, it's because I like to share some information, like either something cool that I've seen, uh, an interesting thing I picked up, or you know, just maybe a little factoid you might find interesting. Today, it's nothing but a rant. And the name of the video kind of tips it off. I hate coin capsules. I really do. I got a really good deal today. I bought um <clears throat> I bought some uh uncirculated uh, Washington quarters. So that's kind of the way I uh, stack silver, quote-unquote. I like to buy um, basically uncirculated 90% uh, silver for reasonable prices. Like I picked up like this coin right here. Um, whoops, sorry about that, guys. I picked this up for, um, I think, $6. So I was pretty happy with that. Nice-looking quarter. So excellent deal. I was pretty happy about that. So when I got home, uh, I put everything in 2 by 2s Now, I know some people would say, well, 2 by 2s probably isn't the best way to save space, but these things, I hate them. I hate them. Um, pain in the neck to get open, number one. That's the first thing that came to mind. It's a pain in the neck to get open. Then if you put them in the tubes, it takes up so much space that you're putting, like, basically 20 of these things in a tube that... Height-wise, could probably accommodate, like, I don't know, 60 or 70 or 80 quarters. So, they're a pain in the neck to open. They're a waste of space. But you know what I dislike about them the most? <clears throat> Is when people put stuff in them, but then you miss, like, information. Like, for example, on, on these 2 by 2s that I have right here, um, I just put the date in the mint mark. Because, I mean, for the most part, these are just very, very common uh, quarters, and they're, you know, basically worth whatever the premium is for a very common 90% silver coin that's in approximately BU condition. So take that for what it's worth. Uh, some of these are worth like maybe eight bucks a piece, nine, whatever. I have a couple that are a little bit better. They might be worth like 12, let's say, but you know, it is what it is. It's just basically, very, you know, comparatively very common uh, quarters. Now, when I have better coins, what I typically do, especially with if it's a gold coin, I'll put the year on it. Like today, I just I just bought a, a, a twenty franc coin. So what I would do on something like this is put, you know, eighteen ninety five a twenty for French twenty francs at the top. At the bottom, I would put that it's uh, zero point one eight six seven actual gold weight. And then I flip it over. On the back, I'll put mintage. And the mintage was like 5.3 million. And then when I have the information, I'll also put PCGS survival data. As far as I know, there is no survival data for that. But I put all that stuff down. And then I make sure, like, I tell my wife, like, okay, what does this mean? What does this mean? So this way, she, if something happens to me, she knows, okay, this one's got something special about it because it's got all this information on it. It's easy for her to look up, find out what it is. Airtights, no information. Nothing. Okay? So, like, for example, if you put your silver eagles in them, okay, you kick the bucket. Your husband or your wife gets these silver eagles, takes them to a coin shop and says, I want to sell silver eagles. And they say, oh, I'm paying X amount of dollars for, this silver, for silver eagles. Well, that's great. So, the very, very common, so let's say they're paying $35. So, those really, really common silver eagles... You'll get, you'll get, uh, actually, let's say 30. You'll get $30 for so those really, really common silver eagles. Well, what about that, uh, 1996 you have that's in uncirculated condition? Maybe there should be a little premium for that. Maybe you have some lower mintage proof silver eagles. Maybe there should be a little premium for that. Guess what? Someone who doesn't know a lot about coins isn't even going to think about it. So basically, what I'm trying to say is, Try and air toward using, uh, in my opinion, 2 by 2s Now, to be honest with you, I use the 2 by 2s and I'm kind of sorry I didn't use the one and a half by one and a half, like for the quarters, just so, because I tend to put them in a book or I put them in, uh, in like the 2 by 2 uh, boxes. It's really a much better way to store them. Uh, takes up, I find, less space. Um, I think if you're going to put them in a book, it's another way to display them. And like I said, the big thing with me, I mean, the really big thing, like today I'm kind of aggravated with the air tights. I don't like them. Today it's really the only day I absolutely hate them because they just aggravated me. 
trying to get them open. But there's so much information that they that they lack, you know, like the mintage data. If you're into Silver Eagles, you know, 96 is like a big year for um, regular strikes. And those years in the mid 90s, those are a little bit better, too. Um, Mintage is pretty low for 86, too, compared to a lot of the other years in the series. But guess what? If you go into a place and they say, we're paying X amount for Silver Eagles, no one's going to know that, well, the person buying them might know, but, you know, your loved one might not have any idea. Okay, if there's a if there's a gold coin, they might not know how much gold is there. At least if you put that a coin as 0.25 ounces of gold, with even the slightest bit of common sense, you can say, okay, gold's 2000 an ounce, a quarter is $500. So they should be figuring, this is probably worth at least 500 bucks. Now, as far as premiums go, numismatic value, and other things, okay, take it from there. But at least they go in there with a starting point, and they have some idea what it is. Or even with a lot of other coins, I've heard people getting, you know, getting ripped off just going in with like a bag of 90% silver. People saying, oh, that's not really silver. I, I actually heard stories about that by uh, other uh, coin dealers. And, uh, you know, people like, you know, little old ladies walk in with 90% silver and they're basically given face value for it because they say, well, that's not really worth anything. Well, it was 90% silver. Now... Maybe if that little old lady's husband had, you know, put them in cards and put silver on them, she would say, oh, no, these are silver. It says it right here. Just a little something I wanted to bring up because, uh, like I said, I'm a big fan of the two by twos and the, the one and a half by one and a halfs if they're smaller coins. Uh, I just think it's so much better for display and, uh, and like I said, for information. I really like putting that stuff on there. Um, like I said, even with some coins, like uh, I have some three-cent nickels, I'll even put uh, survival uh, estimates on from PCGS. Just because a lot of these coins, there aren't as many around. Like I've noticed with the uh, the Washington Quarters, these are, again, the ones I hit the stack you have in front of you right now, those are all really common. I, I mean, the most common of the common. No 32Ss or Ds in that pile. But I found that the survival estimate is only about 9 I'd say maybe about 9 to 12 percent of the original mintage because so many of them have been either probably melted, lost, or destroyed otherwise. That's really all that's left, believe it or not. So it's really not that much. I think that'll end up coming into view in the future years, to be honest with you. But uh, I'll end this now. I just wanted to rant. I thank you all for listening. Um, if you kind of like these coin rants, I would really appreciate the thumbs up. It's very meaningful. Talk to you later.